Well, to this end, let us step back. And let us look what we're actually doing in informatics or computer science. So after all, we are problem solving. So, so a user, say, wants to have a problem solved and we map it on the computer, do something with it, get an output and a solution is produced and hopefully our user is happy. Now, in traditional programming, what we actually do is to achieve this goal is to answer the question how to solve the problem. The how is here, the, 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 the characteristic word. Let's make this precise in this, in this example. So what we, we have the problem and then a programmer writes a program. And programming here means that the programmer is exercising control. It more or less describes how a solution is found. It, in German we have this nice word Lösungsweg, solution path one could say, where the program more or less tells tells more or less to the computer how to go from the, from, from the problem specification to a solution. So the intelligence completely relies with the programmer. So then we have this program that captures a path to a solution. And the only thing that is happening here on the, on the computer at this level is it stupidly executes the program. There's no intelligence, so to speak, that, with the, that lies with the, with the computer as such, right? Okay, the other approach that treats things a bit differently is called declarative programming, where the focus lies on describing what the actual problem is. We just, we just thus shift from a how question to a what question. So here then the idea is to say, okay, in this first step, we are only modeling the problem and we give the problem a formal representation that the computer can understand. Once the problem is represented and there is no, so far nothing has been said about um, how to find a solution, right? One only poses the problem, declares more or less the constraints of the problem. Then actually the, the computer has to solve it and or more or less software that, that is on the computer, as we say afterwards, solvers. They are actually then in charge of finding the solution. So in this case, the intelligence lies with this type of software and not with the computer as such. Here it is actually important to note that declarative programming and using the term programming is a misnomer and is more or less there for historical reasons because originally people wanted to program it this way and there are still languages out there but we are actually more interested in the modeling aspect that's why we actually refer to this as declarative problem solving which Again, is a, is a switch in the way we view things. Programming means a programmer exercises control, while here the idea is it's about problem solving and about the problem with, that you model and give it to a computer and then the computer or the software, the solver, is in charge of solving it. Now let's see what this means in terms of software. Okay, so as before, let's first adapt a traditional perspective by looking at traditional software. So the user has a problem, it uses a program that allows to solve the problem that is actually then executed on the computer and then the program produces during this execution an output that the user is interpreting. This is more or less how problem solving works with traditional application specific programs. Now this program is actually written by a programmer and this programmer has more or less well, programmed, expressed in the program, the path to the solution by saying, well, do this and then this, and if this is the case, then do this. So more or less, the, the path to the solution is, is, is programmed, is expressed by the programmer, and is manifested in the program. And then the computer stupidly executes the whole thing. I'm repeating myself, but I think this is important. Okay, so what actually happens here in this, in this program, the how question is solved. So how to solve the problem. And this I, I put here in addition a, a question mark because this is application specific, it's domain specific, it depends on the specific problem. Interestingly this is different with the second component, the computer here, which is generic in the sense that a computer can compute all computable functions. That's actually why I put an exclamation mark. So we already see here that there is a generic tool working together with a problem specific tool. Now let's look at declarative uh, software. One is software where you declare the problem by putting down the knowledge about the problem. And we're changing some our notions again. That's actually why I love, love to talk nowadays about knowledge-driven software. Because it's this part here that describes 
the actual problem that is driving the whole process. Let me make this precise now next. So, in the traditional, on the traditional side, a program solves the how problem, how to solve the problem. Now, on the knowledge-driven or declarative side, the idea is that the only problem-specific part is here this, what is the problem? This is where the question mark is, what is the problem? While the solver uh, solves is, is a specialist in problem solving. In the same way as a computer can solve all computable functions, the solver can solve all problems it can solve. We'll make this precise in a sec. It's actually combinatorial optimization problems. Uh, but it's, it's a generic tool that allows to solve such problems. Again, both of these guys are specific in how to solve the problem, how to solve uh, combinatorial optimization problems, how to compute computable functions, and the only problem-specific part is actually up here. And you can imagine that not, th this is not really a good measure because this box should be much, much, much smaller because the idea is to do knowledge representation, to represent things on a very high and transparent level and also in a very succinct way. Well, I'm throwing a lot of buzzwords at you, but the idea is that your problem specification is just rolled out. You specify your problem in a short way that is readable, and then the rest is done by generic tools. That's the overall idea, now taken from a knowledge-driven software perspective, to use this, this, this uh, term again. So the other thing is that changes are the roles. While here a programmer was, was doing that, and normally you never get to know this programmer, uh, imagine uh, use Microsoft programs, who knows who programmed this, the, pro the source code is, is, is stored somewhere at Microsoft or where, wherever. But here the idea is that, in the ideal case, that an expert, expert takes the knowledge, dumps it to the system, and then the system acts with, with it. And interestingly, and keep in mind, this is after all an AI approach, this knowledge can even be expressed in natural language, as we will see in a sec. So what the heck? Or more civilized, what is the benefit of this approach? Well, the first thing we have done, and this is the key idea, we have decoupled the problem description from the solution of the, the actual solution or resolution of, of the problem, right? While the first is done by po um, posing the knowledge, best done by an expert, the second part is done by a generic tool or solver, which like a computer knows how to solve these problems. So what do we gain? First of all, we gain transparency because the, the knowledge or the language in which the knowledge is expressed is a knowledge representation language and should be easy to read. Normally specifications are also very succinct. You can more or less read them. Flexibility. Since it's a small specification, they are easy to change and, and to adapt to new, I don't know, new legislations or whatever happens. The same applies then to maintainability. So you can easily maintain something that is understandable and short. And finally, reliability. Um, we have tools actually to map this into, into, into theory improvers and then you can, you can, you can, you can verify uh, properties of this or, or establish correctness and completeness, but also as a human. So you can just prove it because you have, a math you have a mathematical specification and then you can just prove that this is correct and complete with respect to some given specification by hand. What comes to it, and this is actually uh, work that I will unfortunately not be talking about in, thi in this course, but go and see uh, Rolf Schwitter's homepage at Macquarie University in Sydney, you can translate these specifications into natural language and you can, you can take natural language specifications and translate them back into ASP. And this gives completely new dimensions because now it's not only the expert that can understand things or even change, it's even the layperson. Imagine that uh, a company has wants to establish a shift planning system, right? So night shift, day shift, and so on and so forth. And then they can actually give this to the employees and they can check actually the rules that are applied. Because of course, natural language texts, they can read and hopefully understand, right? This is a completely different approach to transparency. And I think it's, to my end, the most transparent as it can get, express what the system does in natural language. Okay, good. So again, we are still in the motivation part, but what actually then does the solver give us? So the solver is generic, so it doesn't know actually which type of problems you want to solve, just as a computer doesn't know which type of computable function you, 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 want, to, you want to execute, whether, I don't know, you surf on the web, or whether you do mathematical calculations, or 
I don't know, you order a pizza, or I, I don't know what, right? These solvers are nowadays very, very, very efficient. Well, in, in English you can say that, in German you would say effective, presumably. But a solver like, like ours or, or other ASP systems or SAT solvers or so, they can deal with tens of millions of variables. And tens of millions of variables is not really the big number. The, the, the big number is that this covers 2 to the power of 10 million or more states. This is exactly the power that you need also to verify, for instance, a processor in your laptop or in your computer. For industrial, big scale industrial problems, you need, you need to cover such big search spaces. Imagine, right? 2 to the power of 10 million states. That's really big. Actually, when I was doing my, my uh, a PhD thesis beginning of the 90s, systems could deal with 100 variables, which also is not so bad, right? It's 2 to the power of 100, but since then, uh, a lot of things have actually happened. What also comes with, with ASP solvers, they allow you to compute optimum solutions. And optimum not only in terms of quantitative criteria or preferences like minimize the cost, maximize um, um, the, the coastline if you, if, you, if, you, if you drive along the coast, but you can also express qualitative preferences like well, if I eat fish, then I prefer uh, white wine to red wine to beer without attaching any numbers to the whole thing. And, of course, and these can also be combined by different aggregation functions like, I don't know, Pareto, Pareto or um, uh, lexicographic uh, aggregation of preference and so on and so forth. So this is actually also a very cool feature. And last but not least, it's free. So these solvers, you can you can you go on the internet. Our our software is, is is open source, freely available. Just download them, and here you go. So I think these are quite some benefits, and this should at least hopefully spark your interest. So the next section will then be about what is ASP in a nutshell. What are the main features? So stay tuned. Bye.